Now we're going to go over how to look at the intracranial contents in the brain or in the skull rather uh, when you're doing your search pattern for a non-contrast head CT scan. This video is going to be broken up into a few different parts because there are a few different sections <clears throat> that we're going to look at in our search pattern. Ultimately there are multiple ways to do this. This is just one way. Uh, but what we have on our left is our soft tissue kernel. Uh, these are about 3.75 millimeter slices, so medium slice thickness. Um, we have it on the brain window, which uh, is 70-30 uh, settings for the window and level. And then we also have our sagittal here um, and our coronal here kind of around um, levels that are going to make it easy for us to kind of tell where we are. So there's a few different ways that we can do this. Um, we're actually going to start at the um, <clears throat> dependent portions of the, the brain, and we're going to start low, kind of in the spinal canal uh, brain stem, and we're going to work our way up. So we're going to start back here, and as we go up, we're going to go up to the um, medullary level, and as we do that, we just want to get a good sense to see, oh, you know, is there any herniation into the um, frame and magnum? Is the, are the cerebellar tonsils herniating downwards? That's going to be a sign of um, mass effect. And then also as we go up to the medullary level, we can see these are the uh, vertebral arteries that are going to come together. So we can get appreciation for those. And around here is kind of the medullary uh, level that we're at. So when we get here, um, we're looking at those vertebral arteries. We're also looking at the premedullary cistern to look for anything like blood um, or to see if there's any effacement with mass effect. Um, and we're looking at all of these cisterns and dependent spaces here for blood and things like that. Once we do that, we're also now at the level that we can really appreciate the cerebellum. So we can just use this as an opportunity to look through the cerebellum all the way up and all the way down looking on both sides to see if there's any abnormal pathology. And as we do this too, we know um, it is a non-contrast study, so it can be hard to tell exactly where, but here we can see this is part of the venous sinus drainage um, system on both sides. So we can kind of appreciate where the jugular bulbs would be and go in the other direction and look at the sigmoid sinus or the region of the sigmoid sinus and then the transverse sinuses as well too and just kind of get a sense to see um, is there anything unusual going on in the sinus drainage pathway. Uh, sometimes you may see densities or air or other abnormal uh, pathology there. So it's just important while you're looking down here around the cerebellum that you also take a moment to look at the sinuses. Now what we're going to do um, that we've kind of looked at everything at this level is we're going to go up to uh, the pontine level. Uh, easy way to tell where we are, we can also look on our uh sagittal of course but then also you'll see the fourth ventricle here can either be flattened or kind of have this kind of appearance to it um, like a lampshade and then we're going to look at the um, prepontine cistern we're going to look at the fourth ventricle to see is there any blood in the cistern in the ventricle uh, and we're just going to appreciate the actual pons itself look for any hypodensities look for any areas that may suggest bleeding uh, and once we've done that, we can also uh, just go up now to the, to the midbrain level. And here there's going to be a lot of cisterns, um, a lot of dependent portions, especially depending on which level of the uh, midbrain you're at. But you, you're going to look at all of these uh, perimesencephalic cisterns, um, supercellar, cellar cisterns. We'll go through some of them here. Uh, there's a lot of anatomy here. We're not going to go over everything, but the moral of the story is that you're going to look at all these dependent portions, again, looking for blood, looking for effacement of these cisterns to look for mass effect. At this level, we see the uh, cruel cisterns over here, ambient cisterns back here, uh, maybe, you know, quadrigeminal cistern as we go up and down um, at this level. And then here we have, you know, kind of our star appearance of the supercellar cistern. This vague density in here is going to be the optic chiasm. And as we go a little bit lower, we'll get the cella. Again, we can look 
at our uh, sagittal view here to look at the cella. So these are all things that we're going to evaluate as we're looking at these dependent portions. Now another thing um, to look at is the intrapeduncular cistern, which is going to be probably best seen right around, maybe around here. Um, we catch it on a few different slices, but that's just going to be the area in between uh, the anterior portion of the midbrain where, again, blood can settle. So you want to look for that. As we kind of scan up here as well, too, another thing that we can do, we looked at the vertebral arteries um, down here when we were kind of going up the brainstem. They're going to come together to form the basilar artery, which we see right here. So we can just follow that on the anterior surface of the brainstem up to the midbrain level. And depending on how big and obvious it is, you may see the PCAs, the P1 segment of the PCAs come off. So you can look for signs of a dense vessel there or anything like that. Similarly, what we can do um, a little bit more on the anterior side, here are the carotid canals. We can just follow those up into the supracellar space and it can be a little hard to appreciate but once we get here these uh, those internal carotids will branch into the MCA the first portion of the MCA will go along the sylvian fissure which is what this is here so supercellar cistern gives off the sylvian fissures and if you can you can follow these M1 segments kind of up and down throughout the sylvian fissure and you can see it even here, this is part of our MCA, but it's hard to appreciate what's going on at this point. But moral of the story is you can follow supercellar cistern out to the sylvia and fissures bilaterally. Let's go do it on the other side. A little hard to appreciate, but here it is. And then as we kind of scan up and down, there we go. We can see the M1 branch here going through the sylvia and fissure up here. So uh, this is just one example of kind of looking at the dependent portions, the other videos in this series are going to go through looking at some of the other structures, but this is a good way to maybe hit some of the parts that are easy to overlook and just go bottom up and hit the areas that blood is going to settle and look at the areas that is going to show you evidence of mass effect.